The waiting is almost over. Formula One launch season is finally here. Now these days it's a lot more condensed than it used to be. We effectively get all of the teams launching within about a week of each other. Not as much fun as it used to be, you might say. But what do we want to really look for over the next few days when the F1 cars are launching? I've got our technical expert, Jake Boxall Leg with me, and I've got our Grand Prix editor, Ed Straw, to talk about some of the details and the themes that are really going to be the important storylines of launch season. And JBL, can start with you. From a technical standpoint, as soon as the cars are revealed and these covers come off, the first thing we do is, what are the details that we can see? We know that the teams hide stuff until it's time for testing, but for you, with a regulation change this year as well, what's going to be the, the key technical areas of the car where you're going to be like, right, I need to find out what teams are doing here and who's doing it differently to someone else? The big one this year, it's going to be front wings, first and foremost. Um, so as soon as those covers come off, I'm going to be having a little peek, trying to see as much as I possibly can, because it's such a big area that's changed this year, um, especially with regards to directing flow around the car. These teams need to regain a lot of downforce that they'd have lost from being able to do that further down the, further down the car. So it's going to be interesting to see how they've managed to counter that, what they've done with the front wing. The envelope for design is very, very small this year. The end plate's very prescribed in their design. What they can do with the elements is very, very you know, restricted as well. So it's going to be looking at the, perhaps the inboard section of the wing as well, at the, just as the neutral section in the middle end, what they do there to try and drive a vortex through past the suspension components and around the tyre and what they can do with the shape of the wing in order to perhaps claw back a little bit of the outwash that they'd have lost. I think barge boards as well are another place that uh, would be interesting to look at as well because they're shorter but they're now longer um, and so the flow off the front wing, that's going to be able to be picked up by the barge boards a bit earlier so it's going to be interesting to see what they do with that in that area, um, especially when it comes to trying to, again, try and manage that outwash, manage flow around the front of the floor, uh, especially when it comes to managing tyre wake and that kind of thing. So, yeah, those are the two main areas I think that everyone's going to be looking for. And, yeah, everyone's going to be looking to see. There might be a few other areas where teams can claw back a bit of an advantage, but I think those are the two main ones. Given that there you focused on areas right at the front of the car and as you said a lot of the functions they provide are to condition the air for the rest of the car so while we've previously discussed and focused on the details of the exact bits that are changing on the cars could they actually have an effect on the design of some of the other areas where the regulations haven't changed just because the way those parts of the car are receiving air flow down the car could change yeah definitely um again it's how the flow is being picked up by the front wings, by the barge boards, that will change for this year. Teams are going to have to look at different ways of, again, clawing back that downforce. And so that might come further down the car. Teams might reshape the barge board area or the side pod winglets or the side pods themselves just to be able to pick up air sooner or in a manner that matches what flow patterns they're getting in their CFD and their wind tunnel testing. So that's all going to have, it's all going to have like a knock on effect. It's like a relay. It starts with the front and then a part after that picks it up and then side pods and that body work area picks it up and then it eventually gravitates towards the rear wing. So the team is going to have to, be able to create a holistic package that works all together. And so if they come up with perhaps strange side pod designs or an interesting engine cover or something like that, then they'll have to do so. Uh, Ed, it's not all just about the technical detail. JBL wishes it was. Uh, it'd be fine for him. We know that there's a lot of interest and there, there's always interest in the liveries of the cars. You could argue they don't change that much anymore or not as much as they used to simply because there's not as many sponsors coming in and out of the sport as we used to have that dictate colour scheme changes. But there's a chance this year we're going to have a few teams changing their colour schemes, potentially significantly. We've already seen the Haas. They've got a new livery for this year. Where else should we perhaps be looking on the grid for some different colours this year? Well, the obvious one is a team that's lost its title sponsor, Williams. Martini, that five-year deal's ended, so we're not quite sure what look Williams are going to go with. I doubt if it'll be dramatically different, but, but who knows? It's always interesting. A, a, a team wants to keep that underlying identity, but they've got a bit more freedom to do something with it. So, yeah, that'll be interesting. Mercedes, of course, released that little teaser, a, a shot of the, the front wing with a kind of camouflage livery on it. I don't think that's going to be their, their real livery, but 
it's very possible they might use some of that camouflage for the initial shakedown before testing. And it's perhaps not a coincidence that it's the front wing because that's the most uh, most interesting area that teams might, might want to see. Perhaps they want to cover something up on it. I, I don't know. You, you never know because it, sometimes it's just quite a good way to get a little bit of attention. Remember, Red Bull in 2015, they actually tested with that camouflage, the black and white camouflage livery, and they did launch, well, their initial reveal last year was with a, a slightly milder camouflage, a kind of blue and, and black thing. So it'll be interesting to see what, what Mercedes have got. And, of course, we've got Racing Point, the old Force India team, which is, is trying to uh, create a new identity. So it'll be interesting to see how far they deviate and what design cues they try and put into it. Most of the teams are going to look relatively familiar, but, but it's, it, there's a few little potential areas of interest there where we'll see some, some variations on the theme. And you never know, sometimes teams do surprise us. They take a slightly different approach to the same theme. I, mean, I think everybody does like different liveries because while it's ultimately it's just paint on a car, isn't it? It is interesting, and we all remember great unusual liveries of the past and, it, and it's nice when things change because it's so rare when cars change nowadays. Yeah, we're looking forward to that definitely but let's talk a little more seriously about the teams that perhaps we want to see something from from the moment the covers come off the car. Who who needs to make a statement with the launch of their cars? We, we know obviously the big teams are under pressure always so Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull it's going to be fascinating to see what they've got but you kind of the expectation on them is huge anyway. Looking around the rest of the grid, who do you think needs to really be showing something you know, before the car's even turned a wheel? Renault's a big one. This is a manufacturer team, lots of investment, they've scaled up, loads more resources in at Endstone, and they need to show they can make that kind of step change between being a midfield team at the front of the midfield and a top team. They're not going to do it in a single bound, that, that's very clear, but Marcin Bukowski recently said that basically everything's new on the car, apart from the, the power steering system, so that's not just new aero and all the usual things but it's all the components that make up the car re-looking at packaging and weight and that kind of thing and hopefully the the idea is that'll unlock a high level of performance because you've got more potential to move things around for packaging etc and I, I think Renault chances are are still going to be fourth this year they're going to be behind the big three but they need to they need to do the same as last year and finish fourth but they need to finish a much better fourth this is a a step in the journey for Renault they're not going to join the big three unless the, the, perhaps the, they, the, the big three do something do something bad and go slightly the wrong way, which is unlikely. But they need to make a big stride. They need to be looking looking in their mirror at the rest rather than fighting them off, so they can go after the top teams. Anyone else, JBL? Where where were you? Which of the dates we've seen on the Autosport homepage? Which ones are are the ones where you've put a circle around them? You're going to be working every day anyway, oh, yeah. so you will be in. <laughs> but which ones are, are standing out to you? Uh, I'm quite interested to see what the Sauber is going to look like, to be honest with you. We'll see that on the uh, first day of pre The Alfa Romeo day. now. Yeah, of course, yeah. the Alfa Romeo. And um, they came out and said that the car is looking very, very interesting this year. There's been rumours that it's going to be one of the more out there designs, perhaps on the grid, maybe even in a nice Alfa livery as well. Um, so, because last year the car was really sort of strange compared to the others. They had this very sort of tapered in, narrow and strange side pod design and so it would be interesting to see if they picked up on that and moved on with that. Um, so yeah, Alfa Romeo's one. I think everybody's looking to see if McLaren can make a, uh, a recovery this year as well. We say that every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so it would be nice to see a uh, refreshed driver lineup, perhaps a refreshed ethos perhaps, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but I think all of them are going to be exciting in a way but at the end I can also say that I can't wait for it to be over. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point the the Alpha I should have mentioned that earlier in terms of of the look because I don't know about everyone else but I want to see that really looking very Alfa Romeo. It was quite Alfa Romeo -y with the, with the red and the Alfa stuff on the engine cover. But you want to look at it and say that's an Alfa Romeo. I think that's really important to it looking like a like a works team, isn't it? it? You want to look at it and say that's red, that's an Alfa Romeo, not just a bit of an Alfa Romeo. Yeah, agreed. And we've already talked about Williams from a colour scheme point of view, Ed, but is that another team that has fallen on hard times and perhaps needs to make a statement with its launch? We were all, I think, largely impressed with the car when it launched last year in terms of it looked like they'd taken a lot of good concepts from some of the teams further up the grid, but they, they never made it work. So do we need to see a simpler car from Williams or just a, a clean sheet of paper and start again? I think it's going to be very difficult to judge anything from the Williams. Yes, if it's simpler, we can say, well, they've tried to scale it back and be a little bit less aggressive with it. But the, the whole problem was 
everything they did looked superficially right and it had that high level of complexity, but they didn't have the processes and the research and design capacity to really underpin that. So if they have a car that, that looks right and is very complex and that kind of thing, it would be the same thing. You say, well, it looks right. We won't know till it runs because it, it's got to all work together. If it's simpler, you'd maybe say, well, they've decided to take that step back. But again, even if you're going simpler, you've still got, you've still got to understand it. And even if it's easier to understand, it doesn't mean it's easy. So I think Williams, we have to really reserve judgment. So I mean, it's quite clear quite early in testing last year that they had a, a real a real stability problem. So I think we have to wait till we get to Barcelona and see that car on track to see at least if they've got a nice, sensible package that they can work with. The thing they need is a car that just works and they understand. And the overall pace, it's important, but that's almost secondary. Even if they had a car that was slightly quicker, but it was a bit all over the place, that would be a worry. Williams needs to know what they're doing why things are working, why things aren't working, so they can actually realistically move forward.